Um, today, Joseph will be in conversation with Amos Kitai, who is an Israeli filmmaker and renowned for such works as Home, Kadosh, The Border Trilogy, and so on. I mean, you all know his films, but one of the things you might not know, which is why it's so special to have Amos here at the Architecture Biennale for the first time, is actually that Amos uh, is a trained architect, also that his father um, is actually a Bauhaus pioneer. Uh, so there's a wonderful dialogue uh, also to the architecture world. Please give a very, very warm welcome to Amos Gitai and to Joseph Grima. So um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here in, uh, as part of the launch team of the Tomorrow. Um, and it's especially because I have a double connection to this um, as one of the contributing members um, to, to Stefano Boeri's team, uh, Pierpaolo Tommaso and so on. Uh, but also as the artistic director of Matera uh, 2019. Um, and we are really proud to be supporting this project. We, are, we believe that this is an incredibly important step uh, in, t in thinking about new ways for culture to be, uh, uh, for Europe to be a laboratory for a new cultural production over the next decade. Uh, so it's our pleasure to have um, Amos Gitai with us uh, today. Uh, Amos is an Israeli filmmaker renowned for such works as Home, Kadosh, Kippur, and the Border Trilogy, and Lullaby to My Father. In 2008, he received the Le uh, Leopard of Honor at the Locarno International Film Festival. His work has been displayed in solo exhibitions at Reina Sofia in 2014, Palais de Tokyo in 2011, Tel Aviv Museum of Art in 2009, and the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 2008, as well as others. He received a PhD in architecture from the University of California, Berkeley. Welcome, and thank you. Um, uh, I, I, would, I would like to start, um, before moving towards themes that are closer to the tomorrow um, and, and uh, about narratives for Europe and narratives in general, which I think is a very strong theme in your work, um, I have always been uh, completely blown away and fascinated by home. Uh, the story of this um, extraordinary building, how you actually manage to use something as static as architecture to talk about something as, as, as dynamic as a society in flux. And in a way, you actually use the building as a, as a narrative form. Uh, maybe you could say a few words about this. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. And uh, uh, first of all, I want to say something to you, uh, Hans Ulrich, and then I'll, I'll get back. Uh, I think, uh, Hans Ulrich, you did something. Uh, you know, art, artists, filmmakers, architects, we don't have real power. Our only power is uh, symbolic. So when Switzerland voted to exclude uh, first uh, people from the big periphery, let's say North Africa, uh, East Europe and so on, and later on recently to exclude all the Europeans as possible, you do the opposite. You create a stage of exchange of uh, culture. And I think this is the only, one of the only things uh, a thinker can do is actually in, in this very little symbol to, to say, okay, you know, dialogue has to continue. Let's stop the provincialism, the powers which has overrule more and more Europe. And uh, so I think it's uh, great. Uh, I would even recommend to my own uh, countrymen, uh, to the Israeli pavilion, to do a similar gesture in one of the years to open the Israeli pavilion and invite the Palestinians to present their work in the Israeli pavilion. I would, I would like to add to that that the, the Korean pavilion that is right next to us here is also a, a, a dual pavilion for North Korea and South Korea for the first time in history, curated by Min Suk Cho. So I think this is really a very important idea. So, because I think that, you know, okay, I mean, what, what is culture? Culture is an object, it can be traded, it can produce uh, 
uh, money, uh, wealth, etc. But culture is also uh, a kind of equation, a philosophical thinking about humanity, about uh, reconciliation. And I think that let's not neglect this option. I think that uh, people believe a lot, more and more, unfortunately, in uh, greed and machine guns. And I think we have not to lose the belief in ideas. Ideas also have moved the world. And I'm very surprised that the current politics of my own country, that they lost this idea that about I the belief in ideas. Otherwise, with all due respect, Jews would not have existed so long. They exist because they believed in ideas. You know? mm. So let's keep believing in ideas, let's keep believing in art, culture, cinema, as a form of dialogue. And, uh, and this is the first theme. And the, the second one is, um, and I think both, I will speak both about architecture and, uh, and uh, cinema. I think that we have been seduced more and more in the last, uh, let's say, 50 years to go for the spectacular. Uh, I was trying, because I made a speech in France, to look for the French term of understatement, but actually it doesn't exist in the French language. You know. So, uh, I think we should go back to understatement, you know. With all due respect to spectacular architecture, architecture is also about designing a 70 or 80 square meter apartment with good layout, with reasonable, agreeable space for working people, and not just spectacular architecture, you know. So, since this is a Biennale of Architecture, uh, I think that architects, ta the very talented architects have to go back to give us some good uh, areas of living, you know. For, for me, the recent uh, phenomena of xenophobic and right-wing parties in Europe, which is very unfortunate, is also about that. It's also the divorce of the real establishment from the basic parameters that they have to provide living spaces. And so, I think it, it represents a big uh, angoisse that people don't even know anymore how to shake. So they go, unfortunately, to these extremist, uh, racist uh, directions. Now, how, how do you think... So they, uh, I, I will uh, go to your uh, question. Uh, I'm sorry <laughs> of, of the, making this uh, detour, excuse me. So, uh, uh, you know, in, in this project, in this cinematic project, because as Hans Ulrich mentioned, I was formed as an architect. Uh, son of an architect, father to an architect, you know, so we are a chain of architects. But uh, in this very early project, I was uh, interested in how can I use a building like a metaphor, you know. So house, which is considered to be my first film that I did more than 30 years ago, takes this one building, which was a Palestinian uh, until 1948, until the 1948 war, then the Israeli government took it over and installed a, a couple which came from Colombia, from the Sahara, from the Algerian Sahara. And later there is a very big economist who converts this building into a mansion, but in order to do that, he has to take stones from the mountains of Hebron and workers from the refugee camps. So the house, a house, a piece of architecture, become also, there is the architectural archaeology, but there is the human layers, the human archaeology. So this film, which is uh, actually quite calm, created a big uh, steer, anyway, launched my uh, work as a filmmaker. I was uh, treated in all sorts of names just because the film actually doesn't say anything uh, which was news, but just by installing the voisinage between these different biographies. So I think that the two disciplines, architecture and cinema, have a, lot, uh, have a lot in common. They both start with a text. We have a text and we have to transform it into form. We have to translate, we have to go through the intellectual procedure of giving shape to words and uh, also installing rhythm and installing space and installing time. So I think in different films, uh, this was the job that I was trying to do. And 
<clears throat> in what you were talking about before, the importance of relaunching cultural production as a unifying, as, a, as, a, as a, almost as a political project within Europe. And I think this is one of the central ambitions of uh, the Tomorrow, and certainly it's one of the central ambitions of uh, uh, Matera, and I think this is something that's already happening here in the space. This is not simply a cultural project, it's not about architecture, it's really actually about, it's a political statement, as you said before. And this was really the idea of the basis of um, the Fun Palace, and I think it's very interesting what uh, Freak was saying before, that uh, the Fun Palace as an architectural product was realized, but it was actually not so much about architecture, it was a way of thinking about cultural production. What institutions do you think we need in the coming decades? How can we actually, what do we need to build in order for this vision of cultural production to, uh, to become real? I mean, I think that, the, you know, frankly, the, the, it's, a, it's a big question because the best of culture is subversive. It's not institutionalized, it's putting questions and it's always a very uh, difficult dialectics between powers who have to finance the f cultural activities and the artists who have to put valuable questions and to disregard uh, uh, institutional interests which are very powerful and become more and more powerful and more and more crushing both for architects, filmmakers, writers and so on. So distribution which is the mean of controlling thought is becoming more and more problematic. But we still have to, to uh, be loyal to these ingredients. I, I suppose that uh, part of the question that uh, Kulas wanted to, be, to do in doing almost a kind of a student uh, proposition of going to these very uh, early ingredients, although for, for in my taste it's a bit too postmodern, I would make it a bit more sober, but that's uh, his right, you know, he's the curator. So, um, it's to, to go back to these basic parameters, you know, what, what is the, what is really, what do we start with? What is the uh, basic ingredients of architects or artists or in this case uh, filmmakers? And, and uh, I think we have to go on uh, asking questions and, and to realize that, uh, as I said, the planet has moved also by ideas. Let's not underestimate the power of ideas. Let, we have to cons consistently uh, ask questions and not, be, uh, not accept. Uh, that's why I launched my proposition to my countrymen from the Israeli position pavilion to invite Palestine to use this pavilion and to have a stage of their own to, to in, in this way artists do not have to obey the institutional political divisions, we don't have to accept it it's not given by God we have to challenge it I think we have time for one uh, very uh, short question. Do you have a, uh, one for otherwise I... I've I, got a last question for Amos, but you should ask the second last question. <laughs> <laughs> my, my second last question, I was quite curious because uh, they say once an architect, always an architect, or at least uh, I think someone. And did you ever feel a temptation to uh, take, a, take on architecture again and to practice uh, as, a, uh, as, as an architect? I mean, I'm doing right now a project with uh, uh, Herzog and Demorand, which we will put some of these questions. And I will also design myself a, a center for master class next to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is the, maybe the birth of the thoughts of the three uh, great monotheistic religions. And this will be maybe my little architectural gestures uh, in, me in good memories of, of uh, what Hans Ulrich ma mentioned, my father, who, was, uh, who came to see Gropius and was sent first to be a carpenter to work on the material, on the wood. So I would love to do this one project of uh, architecture. And that leads us to the very last question. I mean, Joseph raised the issue of the institutions and we have here the, the fun palace of Cedric, you know, in the center of the pavilion is an unrealized institution Cedric wanted to build for the 21st, 20th and 21st century with a limited lifespan and so on. Uh, and he always, you know, referred to it as a very concrete project. He worked with engineers and he worked with a cybernetician. So it wasn't a kind of a 60s project, you know, more like Archigram, which had to do with dreaming. It was really a concrete, a very concrete utopia. So Amos, my last question is, 
uh, about your unrealized project. If you have a, a concrete utopia, an institution you want to build, something, because you've told us about many projects today, you've told us about the house you're about to build, but what are, what are, what are your unbuilt roads? I mean, I'm building, you know, when I sign my firm, I write uh, architect and film builder. <laughs> so I'm, uh, uh, I think it's, it's uh, I'm interested, you know, the, the advantage of cinema is that it is a phantom. So it doesn't leave a trace. It doesn't leave, it just uh, leave a trace in the memory. That's all. So when the film is, is over, we have no object. Uh, architecture sometimes is problematic. I mean, they leave stuff behind that we actually don't like at all, you know. And, and we have quite a lot of it around us. So uh, I would be satisfied in building this one building next to the Dead Sea. I know the terrain, I know this little uh, spot of land which was uh, agreed with a little kibbutz which is next to the Dead Sea. And if I can, uh, I would, when I do it, if I can invite people of the region uh, to to try and cross borders, I think I would be, this would be satisfactory as architecture. Amos and Joseph, thank you so very much. Thank you.